Fear tends to be the greatest influence on most of our lives. For some of you, um, there's just this low-grade worry that you've lived with for a long time. For some of you, um, it, there, there's, it's like around a specific fear, like you, you are afraid of, of being alone, like you, you, finding love and, and, and ending life alone. Some of you are afraid of never being as successful as you would hope. Um, some of you fears always around financial things. Others, it's always around physical health. I, here, here's the reality. Um, you're going to experience fear in life. That's just part of our living. The question I want to kind of pose to you today is what is your fear costing you? I personally feel like that the life's toughest questions have to be brought to Scripture for answers. And, um, and if you were to take the whole breadth of Scripture, and y- you may be surprised to learn that what God's number one command is to us, His most repeated command to us is found in two words, fear not. More than anything else God says to humanity is fear not. I mean, why is God so focused on this? Um, and immediately I think some of us go, well, He, he cares about our emotional state. And, and He does, but I don't think that's the reason He's saying that. And the reason I don't think that God's total goal is to make sure you never kind of have a heart race is because most of the time in Scripture when he says, fear not, he then tells someone to do something that's very scary. Like, Like, David, fear not, now face a giant. You know, Peter, fear not, now walk on water. I believe that God says, do not fear more than any other phrase to humanity because more than any other factor, fear diverts us from God's directives for our lives. What does fear cost you? Your God-given destiny. And that's the reason he says, do not fear. You know, the command, the command to fear not is one of the most oft-repeated commands in Scripture. Somebody said there are 365 times the Bible says fear not. 365 times, one for each day of the year. How many times do you think God has to tell us something before we ought to listen to it? The most common command in all of Scripture is just two words. Fear not. Fear not. Don't be afraid. Be strong and courageous. You can trust me. That's what God says over and over again. Why out of all the commands and all of the instruction that human beings need in life, why is the injunction to not fear number one? Because generally, God asks people to take some adventure, some step they don't want to take. He calls people to acts of extraordinary obedience, to risky faith. And generally, it all comes down to this. Will they go with their fear or will they go with their faith? God says, trust me, and he does it so often because the number one factor keeping people from a life of adventure is fear. It's just plain old fear. So fear has a high price tag. So in Scripture, there are two kind of mindsets laid out as possibilities for you and for me and for the human race. One mindset is based on faith. The other is based on fear. The faith-based mental attitude is I can trust God's goodness and power to be sufficient in my life and live with a sense of relaxed confidence in Him. That's a mindset of faith. Or I can live with a mindset of fear. I'm on my own. Unless I'm real careful and real cautious, something real bad will happen to me, and I might not be able to handle it. Again and again in the Bible, two different sets of people face the same situation and respond in two different ways. For example, Moses sent 12 spies to explore the promised land. Ten came back and said, we be not able. Yeah, the land is great, but the enemies that live there are so powerful we could never defeat them. We should go back. But two of the same spies, Joshua and Caleb, look at the same land, the same enemies, and say, we should go up at once, for we are well able to possess the land with God's help. Two guys, two groups, same thing, two different responses. Or a young shepherd boy named David brought food to his brothers who were serving in the Israeli army. He sees what his brothers see, giant Goliath, taunting and tormenting the Israeli army, mocking God day after day. And all the soldiers of the Israeli army see him, but they won't take him on. David sees the same guy, goes after him with a slingshot. Same enemy, same place, same time, two different responses. 
What's the difference? Well, it's not the circumstance. It's your mindset. Because if you live in fear, you're never going to realize the potential that God's put in you. Growth always involves risk. And risk always involves fear. Living with a mindset of fear will lead to a mountain of regret at the end of your life for all the risks you never took, all the challenges you never embraced, all the times God said to you, come on, trust me. And for those who shrink back in fear and say no to the call of God, they end up sitting in a chair in a waiting room with a mountain of regret. And what's sad, at the end of your life, the thought's going to come to you, what might have been? What might have been if I had trusted God? But you're never going to know. You're never going to know that he's trustworthy because you didn't confront the fear. Why would God provide the answer before you step out to do the right thing? It doesn't take any faith. So why would anybody stay in a job killing them? Why would anybody that has no passion for the job, they're just punching the clock and treading water, and I'll tell you the answer is simple, fear. They're fear they won't get another job. Fear of failure. And maybe some of you right now, what if you try to do something and it doesn't work out well? What if you don't make enough money? What if people see you make a switch at this point in your life and they think you're foolish? Well, here's what you'll do. You'll wait until you can get an ironclad guarantee that everything's going to work out the way you want it to, you will never get this ironclad guarantee. That's why faith has risk to it. What makes you afraid? I mean, what, what are you afraid of? See, some of you are, are doing a job you hate because you don't have the courage to go find the job you'd love. Because fear is actually holding you back because you feel inadequate to actually receive the career you long for. You know, one of the huge lies in my own life was that I didn't deserve that, right? You know, why would you get that? Have you ever had a dream or an ambition, a longing in your life, but there's a little voice inside that just telling you, why you, why should you have that? Why, why, why should you have someone who loves you unconditionally? Why, why should you have a career that's so fulfilling that it actually becomes an expression of your passions? Why, why should you have that, that accomplishment that, that everyone else thinks you're incapable of, but you just keep knowing inside of you that this is something you should try? See, everything inside of you that God has placed in you is going to send you right into the ocean of fear. See, I think sometimes when we're followers of Jesus, we go, what's God's will for my life? And we think that God's will will move us around fear, right? Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't it be great? You go, oh, I know what I'm supposed to do because there's no fear there. See, here, here's one way I can help you. All right, because a lot of people, what do I do? I don't know what God's will for my life is. If it doesn't make you afraid, it's not your calling. The space between you and the life God imagines for you the space between you and the life God wants you to live, the space between you and the life God created you to live, the space between you and the life you long for is filled with fear. And that if you live your life navigating away from your fear, you will never get to the place you, you long for. You will never get to the life you imagine. You'll never get to the life you hope for because no matter what you dream of, I don't even need to know your dream. See, if you have a dream of a different life, if you have a dream of a different you, if you have a dream of a different future, I know that what fills the space between you and that dream is fear. And you have to figure out how not to go around that fear. You have to figure out how to navigate through that fear. It's not the fear of failure. It's not the fear of death. It's not the fear of, of getting sick. It's not the fear of losing the job. It's not the fear of losing the relationship. It's the fear that you're not enough. And the reason you're limited from living the life God created you is, is not because there's any real limitation holding you back, but it's these, these self-imposed narratives that you've allowed fear to write inside of your soul. The fear that is currently in front of you is not actually about the thing in front of you. There's a bigger th something going on in your life. Like there, there's something bigger at play here. There's a battle for who's going to have the most influential voice in your life. That though it looks like it's about your job or your kids, there's really something bigger at play here. And, and it's, it's a war over who's gonna have the influence when it comes to your life. And, and, and listen, this is so clear because when you read scripture, what you're gonna find is most of it can be labeled promises from God. I mean, promises for abundant life, promises for, for peace, promises for joy. Most of the scriptures are God's promises to you. 
Most of your fears are the enemy's promises to you. He's promising you that you're, you're not gonna make it, that your family's not gonna make it, that you're not, you don't have what it takes. The enemy, fear is nothing more than the enemy promising you. It's what he uses to, de to, to deceive you into taking the steps he wants you to take versus the ones God's calling you to take. And, 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 and that's the reason every time God says forgive, fear says, but you'll be letting them off the hook. Every time God says open up, fear says, but you'll be rejected. Every time God says, hey, now's this time to step in faith, fear says you don't have what it takes to take that step. You see, there's a, bigger, there's a bigger battle at play for the influence of your life, which means the greatest decision you make daily is whose voice will have influence over your life. It's fear and it's faith, your father, it's fear and your father, it's fear and your father. And fear says you can't jump because he's not trustworthy. He can't, he can't put this marriage back together. He, he, he can't heal, heal your body. He, he, can't, he can't do the things you need him to do. You need to fight this battle alone is what fear says. And if you choose to follow what fear says, what you're gonna find is you never experience the joy of the adventure God has set for you and you do not get to know the arms of your heavenly father more. Let me just say what I've found. Fear is proof God's got something better. Fear is proof that God's about to open a fresh season, that he's about to do something new, that he's about to unfold a new part of his plan for your life. So jump. I really believe you can make the right choice and trust the right voice, and you would be astounded at what God wants to do in your life. See, no matter what your circumstance is, fear is whispering, God can't do it. God can't, can't heal, God can't, you know, uh, redeem, that God can't make better, that God can't put back in, that, that, that his limitations are why you can't trust him. Now, I'm not gonna act like the world's not a crazy place. There are some real scary things going on in our world. I mean, very scary. But there is yet to be something that is more powerful than the God you serve. And you have to remember that. I don't know what you're facing, but here's what I know. Nothing in time or space or nature or sin or lack or in leader or in death or in disease is more powerful than your God. And that's the reason Romans says that what shall we say of these things, these scary things? If God be for us, who can be against us? How can fear have a place if God, our all-powerful God is for us? God is more powerful than any enemy will ever face. He's more powerful than any enemy will ever face. When we look at what the Bible teaches us about God, we see that he's not just a better version of us, he is completely different than us. We sometimes exercise wisdom, he is all wise. We have some degree of knowledge, he is all knowing. We try to manage a lot of different things at the same time, often not very well, he's everywhere present. We might be strong in body compared to someone else. He is all powerful. Sometimes we get convinced that the enemy or the danger we're facing is bigger than God is or bigger than he can handle. John wrote, greater is he who's in you than he who's in the world. When we're fearful, we need to remember that God is greater and more powerful than any enemy will ever face. We also need to remember that God is with us. God is with us. To you and me, God says, don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. Two things to remember when fear keeps us up at night. Number one, God is more powerful than any enemy will ever face. And number two, this all-powerful God promises to be with us. No matter what you're going through, no power on earth can separate you from the loving care and protection of your Father. Nothing, not loss, not failure, not rejection, not cancer, not loneliness, not sickness, not even death itself. There's nothing that has the power to separate you and I from the love and care of our Heavenly Father in this world and in the world to come. I'm with you, God says. And the ultimate fear of people is, I can't handle it. Something bad is going to happen to me. I won't be able to handle it. But the ultimate promise of God is there's nothing 
you and I cannot handle together. I will always give you grace for that moment or that issue. And if you get a hold of that, it changes your life. And so God says, fear not. Fear not the past, it's forgiven. Fear not the future, I'm already there. Fear not sickness and disease, I'm still the great physician. Fear not loneliness, I'm a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Fear not death, I have defeated death, hell, and the grave. Fear not a business failure. I am the Lord God that gives you power to get wealth. I will supply all your need according to my riches and glory. I will plant you by rivers of living water. Your leaf won't wither and whatever you do will prosper. Don't worry. Folks, the cost of fear is too high a price to pay. And I hope you'll make this decision this morning to say whatever I need to do, whatever things I need to learn, whatever I need to put into practice, I will never live in fear any longer in my life.